Okay, let's try to uh, summarize uh, what we saw in the last uh, video. So um, if you have an equation of this form, x squared uh, divided by a quantity, which we're going to express as a perfect square, plus y squared divided by a quantity, which we're also going to express as a perfect square equal to 1, then the graph of such an equation uh, is going to be an ellipse, uh, and it'll be uh, centered at the origin. Um, now, if we assume that um, a squared is uh, greater than uh, b squared, or in other words, a is uh, greater than b, uh, then um, what that tells us is that this ellipse is elongated along the um, x-axis. Uh, so it'll, it'll be uh, stretched uh, in the uh, horizontal direction. I mean, it's a circle stretched uh, in the horizontal direction. <laughs> now, uh, uh, the uh, quantity a here, which is squared in the denominator of uh, this first term, uh, is going to be the, uh, uh, will tell us uh, the location of the um, x-intercepts, uh, because you'll have an x-intercept at um, uh, a along the x-axis, and then another x-intercept at minus a. Uh, along the x-axis, of course. And um, uh, the b uh, tells us uh, the location of the two y-intercepts. Uh, you'll have a y-intercept at uh, positive b and then a y-intercept at uh, minus b. So um, also, we know that the two uh, foci of the ellipse, uh, or also called foci, um, it's pronounced different ways, um, will be uh, also located along the x-axis. Uh, and again, the center of the ellipse uh, is at the origin. So um, here's sort of a, a, a possible picture of um, uh, uh, this, um, the graph of this equation, this ellipse. Uh, it's hard to tell that this is elliptical. Uh, I think this graph is uh, somewhat uh, distorted. But this isn't a circle. It is, in fact, an ellipse. Uh, that's elongated along the x-axis. Uh, notice the two x-intercepts at a and minus a, uh, um, the two y-intercepts at b and minus b. And um, uh, uh, these uh, uh, two points, um, uh, a0 and minus a0, are actually going to be the points on the ellipse that are furthest distance uh, from uh, one another. And uh, these are called the vertices uh, of the ellipse for uh, that reason. So the x-intercepts uh, correspond to the so-called vertices uh, of the ellipse. Now, uh, this uh, line segment uh, that runs uh, between these two vertices, that's called the major axis of the ellipse. And then the um, uh, line segment that runs uh, between the two uh, y-intercepts, uh, this is called the minor axis uh, of the ellipse. And uh, also, uh, the uh, uh, location of the foci are easy to determine. Uh, those are going to be, again, on the x-axis because uh, they lie along the major axis, uh, which uh, corresponds uh, to the x-axis or coincides with the x-axis in this case. Uh, the location of the uh, two foci will be at c0 and minus c0. And you can determine uh, uh, this value uh, for c. Uh, in other words, uh, 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 the location of uh, these two foci relative uh, to the origin uh, by uh, using this formula. So uh, we know that c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. So notice that looks like almost like the uh, statement of the Pythagorean theorem, uh, but we have a minus here instead of a plus. All right. Keep in mind that um, b, uh, we're assuming b and b is less than a, so b squared is less than a squared. So c squared is going to be a positive uh, value, of course. Uh, otherwise, this equation uh, wouldn't make much sense. Now, um, on the other hand, if the uh, quantity uh, beneath uh, uh, the y squared term is uh, bigger than the quantity beneath the x squared term, that means then that your uh, major axis uh, uh, coincides with the y axis. In other words, uh, this ellipse is a circle that's elongated um, along uh, the y axis as opposed to the x axis. So uh, most of the uh, uh, other things we can deduce, though, uh, about uh, the ellipse are quite similar uh, to the case where uh, the major axis is along the x-axis. So we know the two uh, vertices of the ellipse, the endpoints of the major axis, these are going to coincide with the, uh, the y-intercepts. 
And again, the y-intercepts would be plus or minus a. And um, uh, the minor axis, the endpoints of the minor axis, will be at plus or minus b, the two x-intercepts. Right? And then uh, the uh, two foci or foci are located along the y-axis because, again, this ellipse is elongated along uh, the y-axis. Or it's we can also say it's major axis cosines with the y-axis. So the location of the foci will uh, be at 0 and plus or minus c instead of minus c, I'm sorry, plus or minus c 0. The two foci will be on the y-axis. But again, we can determine c squared uh, by using the same equation uh, in this uh, uh, vertical case uh, as we do uh, uh, in the horizontal case. So um, this slide, uh, 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 or this page, which is taken from our textbook, uh, uh, neatly summarizes um, uh, the key uh, properties of, of ellipses, ellipses that are uh, elongated in the horizontal direction or ellipses that are elongated in the uh, vertical direction. And keep in mind now you can tell which is which by looking at the uh, the quantity that's uh, uh, the denominator that's largest here. Uh, if um, uh, if that first denominator is bigger than the second denominator, that means uh, the ellipse uh, is major axis is along the x-axis. It's elongated in the uh, uh, horizontal direction. Or on the other hand, if um, the uh, second denominator is bigger than the first denominator, that means uh, the ellipse is elongated um, along the y-axis. But in both cases, uh, 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 the graphs of these equations are ellipses uh, that are centered at uh, the origin.